PM board bombs. Welcome back to EM Board Bombs. What's up, Briggs? Oh, yeah. Here, I'm joined by Dr. Blake Briggs, my colleague in EM Board Bombs, uh, my friend, uh, my uh, confidant. Is that is that correct? That's correct. Good job. Um, I don't know what other uh, superlatives I could give. Are those superlatives, by the way? Mm-hmm. Like what I was Ride saying? Ride or die. Ride or die. Ride or die. There you go. There you go. Hey, we're EM board bombs. I, we know boards are coming up here within a few weeks. Uh, people are cramming. We can tell because, because we look at the analytics and they are off the charts right now on our main <laughs> podcast. Also, our premium podcast. Yeah. EM rapid bombs. Right now. Yeah. People are just like, I just have images of people with their Red Bulls, just like slamming them into their forehead when they're done. Right. Yeah. And um, throw, they throw it yeah. to the trash can across the room. There you go. Hey, we're going to get into it pretty quick here. Um, a couple things. Um, the Board Pearls uh, episodes that we've been doing, the Board insanely Blitz, as popular. we call them. Yeah, they're insanely popular. So we're going to keep going until uh, boards are over. So we're going to try to drop in uh, another couple of these. Uh, it's going to be the same thing as last time. So we're going to get through 10 pearls. Just quiz pre- each other. That's what it there is. There you go. That's what it is. We're going to get through 10 quick pearls um and ways that you might be asked uh, some of these uh questions or topics on the test uh we're gonna do five that we're gonna make available for everyone uh that you can check out um and then we're gonna do five the rest of the five um if you're one of our premium podcast subscribers uh you can access them if you want to access those um additional five and access hundreds of episodes just for our premium podcast subscribers again we have almost 500 uh question answer type episodes uh, that are available for premium subscribers. You can go to emboardbombs.com, click on question bank, and you can sign up right there. It's like a two-click process uh, to sign up and get access to our premium podcast. Okay, so let's get into the first pearl, Briggs. So the first pearl is going to be related to acetaminophen overdose. There are going to be two key things related to it. Can you describe to me first uh, that key nomogram? Yeah, so it's called the Rumec Matthew nomogram. Right. And the key here, it's only used for acute overdoses, not chronic, but you're never going to be tested on chronic right. Tylenol overdoses. You're probably never going to see a chronic Tylenol overdose in your career. Right. In general, the vast majority are acute overdoses. And the Rumic Matthew nomogram, you can Google it. It's it's everywhere uh, yeah. online for free. And it says You need to know how to use it. Yeah. They, they will ask you this. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Essentially, what you do is you use that nomogram uh, with your acetaminophen levels and measured right. best at four hours post-ingestion. Yep. What's the treatment? I'm going to turn and it right to, around and ask you. Right. The treatment's going to be N-acetylcysteine. NAC is the treatment. NAC is going to be most effective when given within eight hours of ingestion, but you can actually still administer it if yep. the time of ingestion just is not very clear. A couple of key things, again, that you're going to be tested on. Know that nomogram, how to use it. Obviously, don't memorize that nomogram, but just know how to use it. Exactly. That four-hour mark is really important because they might ask you when do you want to get the lab and yes. they specifically want you to know it's, it's at the four hour post ingestion mark right. not right away and then and acetylcysteine NAC is going to be your treatment sweet pearl one is done all right briggs pearl two now we talked about acetaminophen now yeah. we're going to talk about i love this one I know. I do too. I do too. All right. Now we're going to talk about NSAIDs. Remember, we're not talking about aspirin here. We're talking about NSAID overdose. NSAID overdose, how much do you need to ingest uh, for it to be a concern, Briggs? Gazillion, billion, billion. It really is. It really is. It really is. It's, and and I did a, I did a, uh, a, on our premium podcast, I did a rapid bomb on it. And literally I was quantifying how much it would be so much, especially the 200, the only time you might get in trouble here are the 800 milligram prescription yeah. tablets, but really it's the 200 milligram tablets or what, what are available. Mm-hmm. It would be to the point where you would feel like you're throwing up uh, from you. You cannot ingest anymore. Like it'd yeah. just be like just it's crazy. like a box. Yes, yeah, it's, it's pretty nuts. But so what is the treatment then? Really just supportive care, hydration yeah. and treating their nausea and vomiting. Honestly, that's it. Yeah. yeah. These patients can go home like that day. Um, right. If it was an accidental yeah. overdose, of course, purposeful is a different story. But it, it rarely ever, as in it never, <laughs> leads yeah. to any significant metabolic disturbances or you know neurologic pathology. Completely different from aspirin, completely different from Tylenol. Right. Uh, any NSAID overdose is essentially deemed mild. 
Right. And what the way they would test you on this one is they would give you some crazy dosing mm -hmm. uh, that someone did with NSAIDs. And they would be like, yes. oh, are you going to be admitting this person? Are you overnight? doing dialysis? Are you going to be, yeah, getting dialysis yeah. ready? Yeah. Are you, they're going to want you to confuse this with something else. And they want you to understand you can observe them if you want, um, you know, for vomiting or significant GI upset for a few hours. But that patient is not needing to be admitted to the hospital nope. uh, for these NSAID overdoses. Nope. All right. I got one for you. Mm, so I did a podcast on this recently on yeah. one of the rapid bombs. So when are you thinking about thrombolytics in a STEMI patient? Right. Right. So thrombolytics in a STEMI to, yeah. patient. Right. And and this is, this is critical this to is know. Such a crazy testable, good testable board stuff question. Here. So yeah. thrombolytics, if you cannot, you know, if that patient cannot be transferred to a center that has a cath lab within mm -hmm. 90 minutes of presentation. That is the key there. So if it's going to be, you know, it, it's going to take more than an hour and a half to get them going, you can consider administering within 30 minutes of arrival if you understand that you're not going to be able to get them to a PCI center uh, within 90 minutes of presentation. The other kind of, you know, thing to keep in mind here are you might just be at a center that has a couple, maybe two cath labs available, but then now you have three STEMIs that you're dealing with right. all at once. Right. So, exactly. but, 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 the, but the key part here is really that 90 minute mark. So ideally you're figuring it out within 90 minutes, you're getting them to a cath lab. If not, then you're pushing lytics. Ideally you're pushing it within 30 minutes of arrival. Um, this is something that is still very testable. Um, it, it, we've done a great job of making cath labs accessible but this is still something that's very testable. All right, breaks, Pearl four. So you made the diagnosis of transverse myelitis. What is gonna be your first line treatment for acute transverse myelitis? <laughs> You've made the diagnosis acute. of transverse myelitis. The patient has now been there 24 hours waiting for the MRI. <laughs> right, exactly. You somehow have MRI capability at your shop. Somehow, <laughs> right. <laughs> anyway, exactly. all jokes aside. Don't get me started on MRI. All jokes, <laughs> all jokes aside. You make the diagnosis of transverse myelitis. Sure. The first line treatment is going to be high dose IV steroids. We also talked about this one on Rapid Bomb. So if you're yeah. a premium listener listening to this, you should be golden on this review so far. We've covered every one of these on the Rapid Bombs uh, yeah. in more detail than this too, with the multiple choice question. Yeah. Um, now, if you look, say on the test, they don't give you that option for the steroids, the answer mm -hmm. is going to be plasma exchange. This right. is actually very, very, very similar, if not the same, as many other weird autoimmune conditions. Yeah. It's always this give steroids first, followed yeah. by, if that doesn't work, do plasma exchange. Another example of this would be ITP, immune thromb thrombocytopenic right. purpura, which is a, another rapid bomb we did. Uh, that's another condition that requires IV steroids. If that doesn't work, you do plasma exchange. Yeah. The only reason we mention that, you're never doing plasma exchange in the ED, of course, but the only reason we mention that is that backup option if the test didn't give you steroids as that first line. Right, you got it. All right, last bon pearl. little bonus in there, threw in there. Yeah, love that bonus breaks. Pearl five. So this is a rash that is self-limited. Uh, it has a ton of lesions that you'll see on the chest or the back, uh, almost in this Christmas tree pattern. Uh, just very, very, very just pruritic rash. Uh, patients complain about it a lot and rightfully so. Just by what I said, you should be able to diagnose it. You should know the key patch and you should also know the treatment what is it briggs pityriasis rosacea boom there you go i know another interest hair, another harry potter that, spell by the way yeah <laughs> <laughs> no interest trying to say that yeah another that is like a harry potter spell. so you have the herald yeah. rash rash there right i uh, just very, very potter easy. there you go uh, one of the key things they're going to want you to say give steroids don't give steroids just don't give steroids uh, please don't. Um, and uh, we had, a, again, a rapid bomb, uh, a premium bomb that we dropped on this premium one. I remember bomb. all the premium. <laughs> we did all the treatment things. Uh, remember, no steroids here. Resolves within four to 10 weeks. You can give antihistamines, sure. Um, and uh, what, you know, they love sometimes asking this. What is the viral infection that can sometimes trigger this? It's one of those herpes viruses, yeah. HHV 6 yeah. or 7. Yeah. Yeah. And again, no specific here. treatment. Yeah. yeah, it's more like self-limited providing reassurance and not giving steroids. All yeah. right, well, 
that's it um, for those five board blitzes. We're going to continue this for our premium podcast subscribers. I know. Uh, feel free. Yeah, feel free to sign up. Also, for our premium podcast subscribers, to heads up, we are going to be dropping more of these board blitzes uh, just for you guys, uh, just separate ones as well, summarizing some prior episodes. So look forward to that um, if you're subscribed to our premium podcast. And lastly, before we switch over to our premium podcast subscribers, uh, we shout out to EM News, our only sole sponsorship. <laughs>